looking at the skeleton now, remember that the first nine thoracic vertebrae have demi-facets, and that is because the ribs, the head of the ribs, articulates such that the head of the rib contacts two vertebrae, here and here. So each of these has a demi-facet. In contrast, the lower thoracic vertebrae, specifically uh, numbers 10, 11, and 12, the vertebral bodies will have simply a facet or a whole facet because the head of the rib articulates with one vertebral body. Let me try to show you one of those. Okay, this is the articulation between the 10th rib and the 10th thoracic vertebra. And as you can see, the head of the rib contacts only one vertebral body. Therefore, this thoracic vertebra would not have a superior and inferior articulating surface on the body, or that is, would not have two demi-facets, it has a single facet. That same type of articulation shows up quite well down here with the 12th rib and the 12th thoracic vertebra. Speaking of ribs, you do have 12 pairs of ribs. The first seven pairs of ribs are known as true ribs, and the last five pairs of ribs are known as false ribs. The true ribs are true ribs because they have their own cartilaginous connection to the sternum. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The last five ribs do not have their own cartilaginous connection to the sternum. Ribs 8, 9, and 10 share a cartilaginous connection to the sternum, and ribs 11 and 12 do not articulate with the sternum at all. Ribs 11 and 12 are called the floating ribs. This is number 11, also number 11, number 12, also number 12. Perhaps in this view, the uh, ribs, ribs 11 and 12, which are called the floating ribs, are a little clearer. So this is number 12. This is number 11. Floating ribs. They do not articulate with the sternum. Looking now at a typical rib. The rib has a head. On the head, there are articular surfaces uh, to articulate with the vertebral body. And there's a neck. Then the tubercle, the tubercle is to articulate with the transverse process. There's an angle, a body. And for the most part, the ribs articulate with the sternum via costal cartilage, which would begin right here. Costal cartilage is shown quite well on the skeleton. You can see how the costal cartilage, which we call is hyaline cartilage, allows the ribs to articulate with the sternum. This is the sternum. It's divided into three parts. Superiorly, the manubrium. Inferior to the manubrium is the body or gladiolus. And inferior to the body is the xiphoid process. Also notice this articulation right here. Recall that this is the clavicle which is part of the pectoral girdle, which is the upper girdle of the appendicular skeleton. Notice that the clavicle articulates here with the manubrium, and this is called the sternoclavicular joint. That concludes the video on the axial skeleton. I hope you'll put a lot of time in the lab, a lot of time with the video, and master these bones.